Before I start this modding tutorial today, I just want to give a credit to a tutorial on the Minecraft forums. I honestly didn't know how to do generation and I just looked at this tutorial just to get an idea how to do it and I've also added a few extra features um, to the method so I'll link it in the description for the tutorial that I followed but um, in this tutorial today it's slightly different so I uh, just wanted to say that before we start so let's get into it now. Hey guys, this is Mr. Crayfish and welcome back to another modding tutorial. In this tutorial today, we're going to be looking at ore generation. So this is something that a lot of you guys wanted me to do a tutorial on and we're going to be going over it today. So calm down, um, it's here now, no need to shout at me in the comments anymore. But anyway, let's go get started. And what we're going to first do is create a new class. So you want to come up to the top here and click new Java class. And for the name of it, what we're going to do is call it, uh, we're just going to call it Cheese Generation. Cheese Generation. And what we're going to do is at the end here of this class name, we're going to do space implements, impl, im, let's see, am I spelling this right? Imper, implements, I weld generator like that then highlight over, highlight over it actually let's press control shift O and it'll automatically do it for you highlight over this and you want to click on add implement unimplement unimplemented methods and we'll get this method here called generate now this is basically um, the method that will get called when a world actually gets generated and this will allow you to set blocks in the world. Now we're going to get rid of this to do auto generated method stub there and under this method here what we're going to do is we're going to type in three methods public void generate generate nether and I'm just going to do that and then squiggly bracket at the end do it to go to a new line then we're going to do it again public void generate overworld so this is your normal world in the game squiggly brackets new line and then the last one, public void generate um, end, we'll just call it generate end, squiggly bracket, or oh, normal brackets and squiggly brackets and a new line. And this is going to allow you to generate your ores um, depending on the dimension. Now inside this generate method we've got to actually type out some code and we're going to use a switch method here and what a switch method is is that basically you input a value and it will go to a specific case inside of it so we'll do switch and then brackets actually I spelled that wrong switch and then inside those brackets what you want to do is you want to type in world dot provider and then dimension ID and the ID basically represents um, the ID of the world. So overworld is zero, the nether is one, and then the end is, no, the, the nether is negative one, and the end is one. So we're switching um, each ID here, and what we're going to do is type in case, negative one, so that's for nether, um, two dots at the end there, new line, and just type in break, then go to a new line, type in case zero, two dots, break, and the last one is case one, two dots, and then break like that. So that's basically, we got the nether here, the overworld, and then the end. Actually, what we might do is flip these around just to make a little bit more sense. Um, so put um, negative one below it, and then put one at the top here. And we can switch these around as well. All right. So there we go, just press c Control shift f if you want to fix up your code and make it look neat. Now we actually need to give these methods here some parameters. So the first one we need to do is just world world, so um, capital world, capital W for that one, then just lowercase, then comma, then we want to do capital random, and then just rand, and then comma, and then we want to do int x comma int z and this is basically a coordinates for a chunk. Then we're just going to simply go ahead copy this and put it into the overworld one and the nether one. Now inside this case one here what we're going to do is we're going to copy this um, generate end method here, 
put that inside of there, then we need to input the arguments. We need the world, we need a random, we need x and z. Now this is quite simple. Uh, we can basically um, take the parameters from this one and put it inside of it. So we got world here, put that inside of there, comma, we got random, put that inside of there, comma, copy, copy chunk x there, put that inside of there, copy chunk z, comma, and then paste that in there, and there we go. Now do this for the rest of them, so we've got generate overworld, and then we can just basically copy that, paste that on the end there, and then we got generate nether. So that's for negative one there. Copy that again, paste it on the end, and there we go. Now we're actually going to create the method which actually generates the ore, and this will be able to be used within these three methods here. So what we need to do is create a new method under the generate nether method here, and we'll call it public void generate or and then we need to give it some parameters so the first one we need to give it is block block so this is the block that is going to be spawned so your or for instance the next one we need a weld instance next one is a random so if we want to make something random uh, randomly spawn we actually need this random the next one is chunk x and int chunk z then we need an int min vein size so this is a minimum vein size then we've got an int max vein size then we got int chance now this is the chance of it spawning then we got int min y and this is the minimum level that it can spawn at and then we got int max y and that's the maximum level that it can generate at then the last one is the block um, that we want the ore to generate inside of. So we're just going to call that block and then generate in. Then squiggly brackets at the end and then go onto a new line. And that's quite long, unfortunately, but that's just how the method is. I might just break that down onto a second line just so um, you guys can actually see it all in my window right now. Now the first thing that we've got to do is calculate the vein size. Now we've got this min vein size and the max vein size, but we want it to be a random value between um, these two values here. So what we can do is type in int, and let's we'll call this one vein size. And we'll make this equal to min vein, oopsie, min vein size plus random dot next int and we'll scroll down on here, press enter on max vein size, and then we want to do take min vein size inside of those brackets as well. So uh, random.nextint main ve max vein size take min vein size, um, close off the brackets and put a semicolon at the end. So that's our vein size of our ore. The next one that we want to do is the height range. So we want to do int height range equals max y take min y so we're just using these values here to calculate the height range now we actually got to create the um, the generating variable so we just do now we're going to create a mineable generation variable so we've got world gen mineable and we'll call this gen equals new world gen mine able and then brackets at the end and then quotation now we've actually got to put in some arguments into here so what we're going to do is the first argument that we want to put in is block and we're just getting that from over here the second one is the vein size so simply copy that pop that in and then the last one is the block that we're going to be generating it in. So copy generate in and put it as that last one. So there we go. Now this won't do anything. We've actually got to create a for loop which will give us our random positions that we want it to generate in. So we need to go for brackets int i equals zero. i is less than chance and we're getting chance from over here i plus plus then we'll do squiggly brackets at the end new line 
Now inside of the for loop, we need to create three variables. Um, int xrand, then we do semicolon at the end, int yrand, semicolon at the end, and int zrand, semicolon at the end. Now we want to create now you want to initialize them as well, so what we're going to do is make it equal to um, chunk x, which we've got up here. And then we're going to times it by 16. And then we're going to do plus random dot next int. And then inside the brackets pop in 16. And this will basically give us a random x position within a chunk. The second one, we are going to use our height range variable inside of this. So what we need to do is create random dot next int, and then inside of the brackets you want to pop in height range, and then at the end you want to do plus min y. Then this z rand is basically the same as this x rand up here, but all we need to do is just change chunk x to chunk z, and then make sure there's no double semicolon at the end. Then finally, after those three variables, you want to type in gen, and we're getting gen from here. Gen dot generate, and then pop in our world argument, so we can pop in that one up there for the first argument here. The second one is our random argument, so copy that, pop that there. Then the last three is xrand, y rand and z rand boom now i'm just going to do control shift f and that's just going to put that um those parameters all the way back to how it was and what we're going to do now is we're actually going to write in some code to generate the ors in uh, each dimension so we're going to do the overworld first so we just type generate or and then we'll type in the block that we want to generate so we can simply get our block from our mod, so tutorial mod dot block cheese and then we just need to give it the world argument here, so you just write that in. Then the next one we need to give it the random argument, so rand there, and then we need to give it x and then z. Then our min vein size, so we might just say um, 2 might be our minimum and then our max might be 10, so we'll do a comma, then 10, and then our chance, we'll type in 5. Now you guys can play around with all these variables um, after this Z one here. You can just play around with them however you like. The next one is our minimum level that it will spawn at, so we might do 0, so it's right down to bedrock. And then for our max, we might do, uh, we might do 100, so it actually generates in mountains and stuff like that. And our last one is our block to generate in. So this is in the overworld, and we want it to spawn in stone. Now you could do um, you could do grass or dirt if you want. If you want it to spawn inside the dirt, you could do sand as well. So it could generate in sand only. Um, it's really up to you. I'm going to be generating it in stone though. Now I'm just simply going to copy this method and put it into generate nether and generate end. But what we need to do is actually change the generate in um, at the end here because obviously there's no stone in the end. So we need to change it to, um, what is it called? Oops, blocks dot end, end stone. And then the other one is the generate nether, which we're going to generate in nether, nether rack. And there we go. Hopefully that does spawn in. Now you want to come to your mod class and inside your pre-initialization method, at the bottom here, we're going to type game registry well, registry dot register world generator, and then you will type in new cheese generation. I think that's generation. Is that what I called it? Yep, new cheese generation. And then for the mod generation weight, just put in zero. Not entirely sure what that does, but zero works. We'll press save. And then we can go ahead and run the game now. Now hopefully this does spawn. Let's try and uh, let's try and find it. Let's try and find our our sweet, 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 sweet cheese blocks. Here we go guys. I found some of it generated in the uh, the overworld here. 
and you can see we've got how big is this one two three four four blocks so that was a uh, a four block vein um, and the cool thing about a random is that you could either find bigger ones and it's it's a little bit more exciting than having the same type of vein every time so there we go there's some in the overworld now I'm going to go to the nether and see what that looks like and there we go straight away I found some of the cheese in the nether and my game is lagging quite a bit because I think it's still generating some chunks uh, so here we go here's some cheese there there's some cheese down here as well it's just there was a bigger cluster at the top there let's see if we can find yeah some more over there so it's, it's generating in the nether well so we're going to go check the end real quickly so here we guys right in the end now and as you can see it has generated the cheese I think there's a couple over here as well there's one there it might go down into the ground a little bit maybe oh it's just one wow really just one um, there's one over here and destroyed that by accident there's probably more around as well um, probably inside of it. Let's actually check real quickly. Um, we can just do it by using a little trick. So we just get a fence and a block of redstone here. And what we can do is, is if we place that there, and we jump, eh, as you can see, we can uh, see all the, um, oh, it destroyed my block. You saw there that there's actually cheese actually generated inside this mass, so you would have to um, uh, dig under it. Oh, there's some there as well. Look at that. So yeah, it's generated in the end now. So that's how you do that. Now to basically just recap, we've got these three methods here, which generate end, overworld, and nether. So if you want to generate um, in each dimension, you would put your stuff inside of these um, inside of these methods here and um, you guys can play around with these variables after the z here so the first one again is the min vein size the second one is the max vein size the next one is the chance that it will spawn this one is the minimum y level that it will spawn at and then this is the max y level that it will spawn at so you guys can play around with all of that you can also change which block it generates in and you can also change the block that you're going to be generating. So if you may, maybe you want to generate um, a normal block um, from Minecraft, you could just put that inside of there. We could just generate blocks. Dot. Um, I don't know. Maybe we want to generate bookshelf in the uh, end. We could do that if we want to. You can also play around uh, with some of the values down here. Maybe the 16 down the bottom there. Um, and yeah, that's basically it that you cannot really do down there. If you know if you know calculations, you can probably create um, your own um, random height. Maybe you can do a random height if you know how to do that. So yeah, that basically wraps up this video today. Hopefully, you learnt how to add your generation and what the hell? Okay, whatever. Um, hopefully, you learnt how to generate your ores. And in the next episode, we're going to be going over some block drops. Then after that, I'm going to be showing you guys. Um, how to actually compile your mod and release it to the public. So, I'll see you then. Bye.